I'm back and I am finally doing my Broadway breakdown number 13. Um, I kept promising it I had two other videos, but finally here it is and it's perfect because um, the show just closed this past weekend, so it's nice to like talk about it a little bit. Um, so my number 13 is actually the only Broadway play I've seen um, because all my other on this list are musicals. So number 13 is the boys in the band. Let's see all these lovely signatures. Thank you. Thank you, Stormy Corner. Yeah. Um, so it is very hard to compare musicals and plays, and um, it's kind of an unfair advantage, honestly. Um, so about boys in band, boys in band takes place in the 1960s. Um, it just had its recent revival, and I saw it in my trip to New York. It was my first show of this trip. I saw it June 27th. I just saw it two months ago now, and the bribe will just close this weekend, but recouped its money, so all is well. It was a great show. Um, okay, so back to the story about the show. So, 1960s, it's about um, a group of gay men, and they're celebrating one of their friend's birthday, but one of the characters, his college roommate's in town, and he is straight, and obviously in the 60s, it's a hard time to be gay. So for him to interact with all these people, it's interesting. And the fact that he might be in the closet himself, it raises some questions. Um, overall, it is a lovely show, a lovely play, great lessons. However, it is extremely, extremely dated in dialogue. Um, a lot, a lot of offensive terms that made me gasp. Um, I even refused to buy one of the... Um, shirts because usually I like to buy Broadway shirts as you can see I'm wearing my Hamilton shirt um and my last one's wearing Spongebob I could not bring myself to buy one of their shirts because it had a lot of um sayings I get it's part of the show part of everything but I did not feel comfortable walking around with a shirt that had um derogatory terms um and there are a lot used in the show so it's very hard a little unsettling um it is very much for an older crowd. I'm sure I was one of the youngest in the crowd. Most were probably alive when the original came out, but that's fine. Um, and it is, it's not, it's not the longest show, but the fact that it is an hour and 50 minute runtime with no intermission, it's hard to sit through. Um, I personally think, um, like, shows can do it very successfully, like Once on This Island has no intermission, but it's only 90 minutes. It's a very go, go, go show. For a show like this, where it's um, dialogue only, um, and it takes place all in the same room, it's very hard to keep up with. Um, I personally was okay with it, because I've grown up with theater and stuff, so it was fine to me. But I could see how a lot of people would not care for that. Um, and I warned... Um, because several people, like, ask me about it. They're like, oh, how'd you like this show? I'm like, oh, it's, I recommend it. I think it's a great, um, learning experience. But can you sit through the two hours with no intermission? And a lot of people didn't want to do that. So I think it turned a lot of people off from it, honestly. Um, but it all takes place. It's basically one continuous scene. Several of the actors do not leave the show once they enter. Like including Jim Parsons, who's on stage the entire time. I can see why they had to cancel performances when he had his injury. And he did not come out through a stage door because of his injury. It is a very um, daunting show. Incredible acting performances. Um, it was a joy to see Matt Bomer in person because I've loved him for years. Um, Jim Parsons, who I've personally never been a fan of, not a Big Bang Theory watcher. I enjoyed him thoroughly. Um, Zachary Quinto, who I dislike for personal reasons, um, again, was excellent. I love seeing Robin, um, I, I don't want to butcher his last name, I'm supposed to say Robin, um, was wonderful, um, especially after seeing him, because um, he was in original In the Heights, so seeing him was wonderful. Um, so great performances, great funny moments. I think it was a good mix between comedy and drama, but the dialogue was very awkward. Um, Honestly, I think they should have made some changes for their revival. They could have gone for way better. Um, because it did open after the Tony um, requirements eligibility period season, it is the first show to open for the upcoming 2018-2019 season, so it's not had its Tony run yet. I honestly, 
it's hard because it was a summer show and it was the first to open. So some may forget about it and with strong contenders coming, uh, like Kerry Washington, Jeremy Jordan show, the name's blanking on me, but that's going to be a heavy hitter. I think it definitely will be nominated for Best Show, and I think um, there will be some acting nominations between um, either Jim Parsons, Matt Bomer, um, Zachary Quinto, and Robin. I think at least two of them will get nominations, um, and they could pull out some wins. Um, I think it will be difficult, though. But um, it has closed now, so I can't recommend you watching it, and there is no tour coming. Um, but um, So watch out for the Tonys. So here's like, that was my little breakdown of it. Um, so that was number 13 on my list and my only play. Next week will be number 12. Yeah, I'm probably going to stick to doing one a week, maybe two. So, uh, so we have that coming. I'm so I think Yes, I know what number 12 is. Okay, I do know what number 12 is. And I do have my Crazy Rich Asians um, review coming because I want to wait till it's released. And I am seeing another movie tonight, so I might review that. Um, so we'll see. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, Feel free to comment, message me if there's anything you're liking or you want to see more of. Um, thank you, guys. Have a great day.